The following plot illustrates a simulation of a 2D gravity turn rocket trajectory where the purple sections represent the thrusting portion of the trajectory and the cyan is the coast phase. And this is a gravity turn trajectory because after the initial pitch over maneuver, the rocket engines are always pointing along the long axis of the rocket and gravity is causing the change of the flight path angle, which also keeps the rocket's angle of attack small. And I'll be going further into details explaining all of these terms in this series. And in this video, we'll be getting an intuitive understanding of the fundamental equations that are required to simulate rocket trajectories, such as the Tsiolkovsky slash ideal rocket equation and specific impulse. And note that the equations for the position over time of a gravity turn trajectory have no analytical solution and thus must be solved numerically. So in this video, we'll be going over the definition of a rocket, the Tsiolkovsky slash ideal rocket equation derivation and how it comes from Newton's second law, definition of specific impulse and a delta V versus fuel mass plot, which is the one here on the bottom. And if you haven't seen it already on this channel, I have the Space Engineering Podcast, which is also available on Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Simplecast. Along with on this channel as well, I have over 50 videos on orbital mechanics with Python, and I'm also making them in Spanish. And I'll have all the links in the description. So let's start with how I like to think about the definition of a rocket, which in its most abstract sense is a vehicle which expels mass to accelerate. And note that this can apply to something as simple as a balloon, which when it's opened, air goes out in one direction and the balloon accelerates in the opposite direction. And in order to understand the derivation of the Tsiolkovsky slash ideal rocket equation, we must make sure we understand Newton's second law, which states that the rate of change of momentum is directly proportional to the force applied in the direction of the force, which is seen in this equation here. So in an equation form, we see that F net, which is the net force, is a derivative of momentum with respect to time, where momentum is simply the mass times the velocity. And note that a lot of times we're used to seeing Newton's second law as F equals MA, but this is only true when the mass of the system is constant. In that case, mass is factored out of the derivative, leaving us with, with this equation where F net equals M constant times the derivative of the velocity with respect to time, which equals MA. But for rockets, this mass is constantly changing, so we cannot make this assumption. And here we get to the derivation of the most fundamental equation in all of rocket science, which is the Tsiolkovsky slash ideal rocket equation where we start with a conservation of linear momentum, where we have the mass of the fuel times that fuel's velocity is equal to the mass of the rocket times the delta V of the rocket. So we can see in this diagram here, where is a piece of mass is shot out in one direction with some velocity, which causes the rocket itself to have a change of velocity in the opposite direction. And then when we take the limit as a piece of mass approaches zero, so the mass of that mass approaches zero, the deltas become Ds as we see in calculus. We then move the minus M rocket turn to the left side of the equation and integrate from initial to final time of when the rocket is thrusting. And here we assume that the velocity of the outgoing fuel is constant, so it can be taken out of the integral. So on the left side, we have the integral from the initial to the final mass of the rocket of one over the mass of the rocket at any given time times the infinitesimally small mass of fuel is equal to the right hand side where we have the integral of the initial to final velocity of the rocket of the infinitesimally small delta v caused from that small piece of mass expelling. When we evaluate the integrals we recall from calculus that the integral of 1 over x is a natural log of x so that's where that comes in here where we have the natural log of m final over m initial when it is evaluated m final minus m initial. And on the right side, we just have the final velocity of the rocket minus the initial velocity of the rocket, which itself is a definition of delta V, the change in velocity. And finally, using some principles of logs, we distribute the negative sign and rearrange the, the subtraction of the logs to arrive at the most fundamental equation in all of rocket science. Here it is, delta V of the rocket is equal to the to the velocity of the fuel coming out of the rocket times the natural log of the initial mass of the rocket over the final mass of the rocket. Here's a visual representation of what this equation tells us. So on the x-axis, we have the percentage mass of fuel, which is how much of the total mass of the rocket is just fuel. And on the y-axis, we have the delta V that you can get from each percentage mass. So if we take a look at this purple line here, which corresponds to a specific impulse of 200 seconds, we see that just to get to lower Earth orbit LEO, which is represented by this blue line here in delta V, 
the rocket will have to be over 99% just fuel. And even for a specific impulse of 300 seconds, which is a cyan line, it would still take about 96% of the total mass of the rocket to be just fuel. And this is why it's so important for rockets to utilize staging so they can get rid of mass on the way up in order to be able to decrease the total percentage mass of fuel here. So the main takeaway here from this plot and that it's, is that it's really difficult to get to orbit and most of any rocket's mass will always be fuel. And now for the definitions of the effective velocity and specific impulse. So as the name states, the ideal rocket equation we derived is only valid in ideal scenarios, where in real life, the atmosphere slows down the mass of fuel coming out, and not all the thrust is perfectly axial, so perfectly down the length of the rocket. The definition of specific impulse is how much thrust you are getting per unit mass flow of propellant or fuel, which is in units of meters per second. And in my mind, this definition is a lot more intuitive than the next one I'm about to talk about. And the way that people talk about specific impulse usually from day to day is through a value that is divided by the geocentric factor. So this first definition divided by the geocentric factor, which is 9.81 meters per second squared, the, the acceleration due to gravity at Earth's surface. And this definition of specific impulse is in units of seconds. And this is what you'll usually see when you see a spec of a rocket engine. So since this is not an ideal scenario in real life, instead of V fuel in the ideal rocket equation, you have V effective or V equivalent velocity. And note that this value is not constant throughout flight since the atmospheric density is changing as you gain altitude. And that's why rocket engines will tell you their specific impulses at sea level and at vacuum. And vacuum will always have a higher value since there's no air pushing back on the fuel flow. And here you can see the different definitions of the specific impulses and how they're plugged into the equation below. Where the first definition, you can just plug it straight in. But for the second definition, you have to multiply it by G0 in order to get it into the units that you want of velocity. So be sure to hit like and subscribe to stay up to date with all the new videos coming out in this series, the Orbital Mechanics with Python series, the Spacecraft Attitude Control with Python series, and the Space Engineering Podcast. And let me know in the comments if you have any questions, if I went through anything too fast or if anything was confusing about what I talked about. And here on the right is a sneak peek of what I plan on doing in this Rocket Trajectories video series. Uh, this isn't in any particular order. I just put down all the ideas. So again, let me know if you like these ideas and also if you have any other videos that you would like me to make on rocket trajectories. So that's pretty much it for this video. Again, be sure to hit like, subscribe. Let me know what you thought about the video and thank you for watching.